Good afternoon. This is Friday, April 1st, uh, 2022. I'd like to welcome you all to the Legislative Office Building for a special uh, call meeting. Uh, we're going to have an introduction from Senator Well, I'm going back to that. My bad. Uh, will the clerk please call the roll? Michael Regardin. Present. Herbert Gardin. Present. Edward Gilson. Here. David Holes. Here. Roy Rehill. Here. John Martinos and Mark Excused. Frank Bombardo. Here. Paul House. Here. James Weatherup. Here. Mary Ellen Chesros and Mark Excused. Linda Lockwood. Here. Richard Klein. Present. Patrick Twist. Here. Stephen Walpole. Here. Nathan Emmons. Here. James Scanlon. Here. Lori Magano. Here. Robert Wilmot. Here. Marie Schatz and Mark Excuse. Tim Stahl. Here. Noel Samuelson. Here. James Parasic. Here. Michael Soloway. Here. Mark Greco. Here. Frank Castilia. Wouldn't miss it. Mr. Chairman, that's 22 present and three excused. You have a quorum. Thank you. Would the clerk please lead us in the invocation? Let us give thanks for this opportunity to serve our community. Help us to be kind to one another as we confront difficult decisions. Let us remember that we all wish for a healthier, happier, more prosperous tomorrow and that the fates we enter are only to decide which road to take. Grant us clarity of purpose, courage, and resolve in all that we do and protect us from all distractions. Amen. Amen. If we could all remain standing for a moment of silence to show our solidarity for the citizens of Ukraine. Thank you. Thank you. Now the pledge. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Thank you, and thank you all for coming. I'm going to read a brief statement. Uh, I want to begin by bringing you up to date on the actions we've taken to date. Out of respect for the necessary integrity of the criminal investigation, there has been little we could say until after its conclusion, but that does not mean we have been idle. This is the second special meeting in a month to learn and initiate actions regarding this tragedy. We're taking a deliberative and responsible path to acquire all the facts to guide our decisions going forward. A course of action has been planned, which is being started today with the adoption of today's resolutions. I have also informed the State Attorney General's Office of the investigations we are starting, and, have I, and I have invited the Attorney General to conduct its own if they feel warranted, contrary to what you may have heard. Contrary to another rumor, there is a public comment period today specific to today's resolutions. We have public comment on resolutions of the day at every legislature meeting, part of our rules. As I previously stated, Sweeble County is committed to thoroughly examining the tragic death of Jordan Brooks without prejudgment and with transparency. This is being accomplished by a series of impartial investigations that will provide the legislature a full account of what transpired in this case. The first was an investigation by the Sheriff's Department, which led to Jordan's mother and stepfather being arrested and charged with criminally negligent homicide, second degree mind slaughter, and first degree endangering the welfare of an incompetent or physically disabled person. This investigation led to no one else being charged or held responsible. Today, the legislature will take two more important steps to get to the truth of this tragedy. We intend to hire an investigative attorney to examine the Jordan Brooks case in depth. This will provide us with a complete picture of what transpired and an analysis of the actions or inactions of CPS and all other organizations involved in the case. This investigator will have complete anonymity and will work in his own direction, not ours. We will let this investigation lead wherever it takes us. To ensure impartiality, great pains were taken to identify a qualified investigative attorney with no prior ties to Oswego County personnel or professional uh, people. 
to ensure this investigation does not impact the district attorney's efforts in the Waldron case, it will begin after the prosecution is complete. Additionally, we intend to hire a highly qualified firm recommended by the Office of Children and Family Services to analyze our child protective and preventative service divisions. This firm is experienced in examining social service systems and their operating procedures and practices. This will identify strengths and areas where improvements can be made, and this analysis will begin immediately. The legislature recognizes its obligation to handle this situation responsibly to ensure the best possible outcome for the children in our community. Our job is not to rush a judgment or make decisions based on incomplete information. We are not going to scapegoat anyone, and that solves nothing. Decisions about accountability will be made only after we have all the facts. Since the death of Jordan Brooks, our DSS convinced the state to develop training for caseworkers on how to effectively work with children with physical disabilities. That training was not available previously. DSS has also changed its practices and now automatically assigns any case involving a child with physical disabilities to its multidisciplinary team, which is comprised of our most experienced caseworkers. Like employers everywhere during this so-called great resignation, we are finding it increasingly difficult to recruit staff, including caseworkers. We can't force people to apply, but we can and have removed the red tape in our hiring process. Next week, I will ask our Finance and Personnel Committee to waive our vacancy review process to allow the Commissioner to immediately recruit for all budgeted vacant positions that perform child protective work. We hope that the investigations and analysis we are initiating will reveal even more improvements we can make to keep children safe. We in the legislature understand and feel the emotions Jordan's death has caused in our community. We all want answers and we understand the urge to quickly apply blame. But we need true and complete answers in order to take responsible actions. It's going to take some time to do that. So we ask the public and the press not to rush to judgment. We ask for your patience while we go about this critical work. Thank you. Now as far as procedure today, we do and always have allowed for speakers on resolutions of the day. Mr. Emmons. Thank you. Um, per our previously established rules, you may come forward. You have five minutes to speak, and it's about resolutions of the day, not about other items. Would Colleen Scott wish to speak? Thank you. The podium. No, you can speak on these resolutions. That's what I want. Five minutes is your total. Well, Thank you. It may help, excuse me, it may help to identify which re resolution you're speaking to when you are speaking to that one. Okay. That makes sense. All right. All right. Thank you. Okay. okay. I'm talking about the first resolution. I'm glad that they're going to do an investigation. I've been here before talking about the same subject, only it was 14 years ago. The next thing I want to say is the second resolution, I don't understand why it's a big secret. All you Republicans in here know the name that goes there. I don't understand what the big secret is. It's our money. $75,000 in one of our taxpayer money. It doesn't seem right that I hear Will Barkley, who's our assemblyman, speaking very knowledgeably about this situation. I think that Will Barkley should be worrying about the budget. Um, I just 
I can't believe that it happened again. 14 years ago, I was here, time after time after time. I can't believe that another commissioner let this happen in her department. So I don't have much to say, seeing as it said that we couldn't speak at the meeting in the paper. So I don't have a prepared speech. But it's not right that another child in our county has died due to inattention to a situation in his home. Thank you. Is there anyone else would like to speak on public on the resolutions of the day? Thank you. Now moving on to resolutions and motions of the day. Resolution SM1 by Legislator Rehill. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I offer the following resolution and urge to adoption, and I would uh, request a uh, roll call vote. Thank you. Will the clerk please read the heading? Resolution authorizing an independent investigation into a child fatality OCFS child fatality report SY-21-020. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I thought I would read a passage from the resolution because it states pretty clearly the reason for doing this. Uh, in the resolution it states, whereas this legislature is responsible for the oversight of county departments and is accountable to the public and believes an independent investigation into the Department of Social Services response and handling of this child's death and the facts and circumstances leading thereto is warranted. I think uh, that speaks to the resolution and why we should do this. Thank you, Legislator Evans. Chairman, I'd like to uh, make a motion to amend the resolution. And it would be uh, for two uh, spots in the resolution. The first result, uh, to insert the name of Scott W. Eisman, ESQ of Saratoga Springs, New York. Uh, and the second uh, amendment would be to, um, or the second result, the second result to be resolved that said legislation, investigation, excuse me, that said investigation shall commence after all criminal proceedings are completed and a report provided to the chair of the legislature within the next 90 days thereafter but not more than the next 120 days should additional time be warranted, and it is for Thank you. Do we have a second there? Second. Second. Multiple seconds. Any discussion on the amendment? Legislator Castillo. All right. I'm a little confused here, because I thought everything went through a committee. Why isn't, you know, why aren't you doing a uh, way the rules to bring these forward? They never went through any committee. What's going on? Rich, is this, I'd like a ruling on this, which is, are you supposed to come through a committee or not? A special meeting, the meeting was called for the resolutions and the call of the meeting. So you don't need committee action on a special meeting. Thank you. Any other discussion on the amendment? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Roll call. Roll call. Roll call. Roll call. Okay, we'll do a roll call on the amendment. <coughs> roll call on the amendment. Michael Yernan. Yes. Herbert Yernan. Yes. Edward Gilson. Yes. David Holtz. Yes. Roy Greenhill. Yes. John Martinos, uh, excuse Frank Mabardo. Yes. Paul House. Yes. James Weatherup. Yes. Mary Ellen Chesros and Mark excuse Linda Lockwood. Yes. Richard Klein. Affirmative. Patrick Twist. Yes. Stephen Walpole. Yes. Nathan Emmons. Yes. James Scanlon. Yes. Laura Magano. Yes. Robert Wilmot. Yes. Marie Schatz and Mark Excuse, Tim Stahl. Yes. Noelle Samuelson. Yes. James Karasek. Yes. Michael Soloway. Yes. Mark Greco. Yes. Frank Castilia. No. Mr. Chairman, that's 21 in favor, one opposed, and three excused. Thank you. Back to the original resolution. Any discussion? Yes, as amended. Any discussion as amended? Legislator Castilla. Resolution authorizes independent investigation. And from what I can see, we're moving, going to move money into an account, 
DSS is going to pay for this independent investigation out of its own pocket. So how is this uh, independent? Because we're hiring them. And we're going to ask them to investigate the people that are paying us. Legislator, uh, just to, to clarify, Legislator Cecilia, the uh, portion of funding that uh, will be uh, directed towards um, uh, this particular resolution is not being uh, put into a DSS account. It's actually being put into a legislative account. We feel that it's extremely important uh, that that uh, particular funding uh, is exclusive uh, from DSS. Uh, the upcoming uh, resolution, which we can speak to in a few moments, is reflected in the DSS account. I won't stand upon that further. Thank you. Any other discussion? Legislator Garcia. But now that brings up another issue. Where does it say it on this, you know, in the packet here? All I see is funding for, out of the unappropriated fund balance, it's $75,000, they're going to consulting. And then we're going to create a, uh, a line item that that money is going to go into. But now uh, the majority leader says, no, we're going to create another fund. But it's not in here. But yet you want us to vote on this today. I, I'm sorry, you guys, you guys are really skirting around legalities here. Any other discussion? Roll call vote, please. Michael Yernan. Yes. Herbert Yernan. Yes. Edward Gilson. Yes. David Holtz. Yes. Roy Rehill. Yes. John Martinez and Mark Excuse, Frank Babaro. Yes. Paul House. Yes. James Weatherup. Yes. Mary Ellen Chesgros and Mark Excuse, Linda Lockwood. Yes. Richard Klein. Yes. Patrick Twist. Yes. Stephen Walpole. Yes. Nathan Emmons. Yes. James Scanlon. Yes. Laura Magano. Yes. Robert Wilmot. Yes. Marie Schatz and Mark Excuse, Tim Stahl. Yes. Noelle Samuelson. Yes. James Karasik. Yes. Michael Soloway. Yes. Mark Greco. Yes. Frank Castilia. No. Mr. Chairman, that's 21 in favor, one opposed, and three excused. Thank you. Resolution passed the panel two by Legislator Rijo. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I offer the following resolutions, urge its adoption, and would request a little call vote. Thank you. Will the clerk please read the heading? Resolution authorizing the execution of an agreement with blank concerning an investigation into child fatality trends. <coughs> Uh, this resolution will allow us to bring in the expertise we need to make sure we have a process going forward that's going to uh, make, the, make the, uh, the entire department function as good as it possibly can and remedy any problems that are identified. Thank you. Any legislator members? Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to amend the resolution to insert the name Bonnet Day of Group into the header. To insert the name Bonadea Group into the first whereas and to modify the resolve to uh, include the name Bonadea Group and to change the sum for uh, to uh, $115,000 from $75,000. Thank you. Do we have a second? Second. 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 Any other discussion? Roll call vote. Legislator Christine. Bonadea Group. Well, we couldn't put that in before, so that we would know who you know we're dealing with. Now, if I recollect the Bonadale group did a group, did a study, an investigation, and a study. I think it was 2016 to 2017, and we're going to ask them to do the same thing again. And now the amount of money has gone from seventy-five thousand dollars to one hundred twenty-five thousand dollars. What is? What did we do as far as a, an RFP on this? What is the limit that we don't have to do an RFP on? Rich, Mr. Mitchell, what, is there a limit that we don't have to go for an RFP? This is a service. Uh, procurement does allow for RFPs. I defer to Phil on, on that was put some background. Uh, New York State does not require you to go to RFP. 
uh, on professional services. Uh, our, we have a, a practice of doing that. However, this particular group uh, has unique training by OCFS, uh, the only one in the state, I think it is the only one in the state, that is, has been trained by OCFS to specifically do this work. So this is why we went to that. And in terms of, of uh, why the, why the uh, money changes and inserting the, the names, it, this is a very quick turnaround, um, the proposals and scopes of what this would uh, uh, cost and entail were finalized today. So that's why these things are being considered today. Any other discussion? Yeah, I'm not done yet. Okay. Slater, Christine. Okay. Uh, why are we in such a rush to do this? Why does this? Why did? Why are we having these meetings, this meeting today to do all this? What's the rush? You're not willing to meet. Just, just. I'm answer, I asked the question, Mr. Chairman. What is the urgency of it right now? Legislator, uh, Mr. Chairman, a couple of points. Uh, the church, I think, uh, did a great job uh, developing uh, the rationale uh, for Montadeo. Um, I do want uh, this legislature, this public, to know. Uh, that we have uh, worked around the clock and worked with uh, partners uh, outside the county to best identify those uh, that would be most responsive, most respected, most credible in terms of our investigation on both sides. And I think the public needs to know that there are two sides to the investigation that we are outlining today. Uh, one is specifically to Jordan Brooks, uh, but the other one is this broader look in terms of our uh, CPS and our child protective service, or child protective and preventative services. If you ask anybody, and we've asked a lot of a lot of folks, who are the experts in terms of conducting such a broader look in terms of our DSS, the name Bonadeo is universal uh, in terms of an answer. They are heavily trained directly by OCFS. If you call OCFS today. You ask that question, they would give you the name Bonadeo. It is true, they were here six, in 2016 uh, to, to uh, conduct a, uh, a, a report uh, for us uh, you know, six years ago. It's time for us to do that again. Now, in terms of the urgency as to why we are doing this today, I, for one, stand in front of you saying I am unwilling to wait weeks, months, as maybe some others in this room would, rather to start that investigation now, to start our review now. The time is now to start that. If there are folks in the room that would rather wait, wait weeks, months, years to do that, God help them, quite honestly. But our legislature is moving fast as we can, as firm as we can, as deliberate as we can, we have a criminal court case that is out in front of us that we have to be most respectful of, that we have to understand, that we have to not interfere with. And we will do, as a legislature, what we can at the time that we are given to advance this forward. This Bonadio study can start as soon as we approve it. We can get the wheels going. It will probably take a few months for them to get all the information that they need. And we will be review it as a legislature. Mr. Castiglia would like to wait months to start doing that. That's his prerogative. I'd rather start that process today and move forward. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Legislator Crest. Yeah, to the advantage of some voters and disadvantage to others, 14 years ago, there was only one legislator in this room that was here when that incident took place. Everyone else has not been part of this process has not had to deal with any type of a situation like this. And it's become quite clear that the public is not going to tolerate us dragging our feet on this. Uh, being a person that works in the disability community, I am extremely proud that we're going to take these steps as quickly as possible, and we're going to be using an agency that's thorough at what they do, and that process is not going to happen in two or three weeks. And then the process starts with us as being responsible uh, people representing the community of putting together the program and solutions that are identified to us. Thank you. Thank you.
Any other discussion? Legislator Castillo. Okay. Now, we talk about urgency. We had a report, Mr. Chairman, you had a report in November. That was three months ago. Now, but now all of a sudden it's urgent. Do we have a meeting and vote on this and move this forward? But it wasn't urgent then, but it's urgent now. And I would like to see the cover letter that went along with that report. And in that report, it listed everything that the DSS was, you know, failing on or looking at. So we could have hired Benadeo Group back then, but we didn't. But now Mr. Evans is saying, I want to wait. No, I don't want to wait. I want to have the Attorney General's office come in and take a look at this. And we've already said that we're going to wait on certain items, but on this one, we're going to start now. Well, they already gave us a report in 2016. What did we do with it then? All right. So I'm sorry, but you guys are talking about urgency, but it wasn't urgent in November. Why is it urgent in March? All right. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. A rebuttal before the roll call vote. In November, there was still a potential of an ongoing criminal case, which has come to fruition. We could not take any action based on that until the medical examiner decided the cause of death, which propelled us to this point. Second, perhaps you did not hear me when I announced earlier today, I have reached out to the Attorney General and I welcome their involvement, but we don't feel that it's pertinent or prudent to wait to see whether they have the manpower, the staff, or the interest in this case. If they come, fine. I would welcome them with open arms, but the reality is we need, we're moving forward now. Roll call vote, please. I'm not done yet, sir. I've got my hand up. Now, wait a second. You just said prior to this that the Bonadale group is not going to interfere with a criminal investigation. Why is it today it's not going to interfere with it, but in November it would have? It would not have. Okay? We could have done it in November. You wanted to wait. March, now all of a sudden it's a, it's a hurry. I'm sorry. Thank I you. Can't, can't abide by it that it's, now it's a rush. Thank you. Legislator Rita. Mr. Chairman, I think we can uh, just have a, an oral vote on the amendment and then have a roll call vote on the, on the resolution. Thank you. We're in agreement? Yes, sir. All those in favor of the amendment? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Moving back now to the original resolution. Any discussion? Roll call vote, please. Michael Yerda? Yes. Herbert Yerda? Yes. Edward Gilson? Yes. David Holt? Yes. Roy Rehel? Yes. John Martinos and Mark Hughes, Frank Lombardo? Yes. Paul House? Yes. James Weatherup? Yes. Mary Ellen Chesros and Mark to excuse Linda Lockwood. Yes. Pa Richard Klein. Permanent. Patrick Twist. Yes. Stephen Walpole. Yes. Nathan Emmons. Yes. James Scanlon. Yes. Laura Magano. Yes. Robert Wilmot. Yes. Marie Schatz and Mark to excuse Tim Stahl. Yes. Noelle Samuelson. Yes. James Karasek. Yes. Michael Soloway. Yes. Mark Greco. Yes. Frank Castilia. No. Mr. Chairman is 21 in favor, one opposed, and three excused. Thank you. Moving now to resolution SM3 by Legislator Rio. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I offer the following resolution for its adoption and with our request for roll call vote. Thank you. Will the clerk please read the heading? Resolution authorizing budgetary modification, Department of Social Services, Child Fatality Consulting and Investigations. Uh, this is to uh, move the money to the appropriate lines in the budget for the two previous resolutions. Thank you. Basically housekeeping. Any discussion? Oh, to amend it First off, we, we need to amend it. We have to amend uh, the budget line itself. Go ahead. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to make the amendment to the budget modification. The line in the handout. And the dollar amount. The appropriate fund balance, $75,000 uh, as a, a deduction. State aid and family assistance, 
$71,300. Salting fees at $115,000 and legal fees at $31,300. Thank you. Do we have a second? A second. Do we have any discussion on the amendment? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Mr. Chairman, it's 21 in favor, or 22 in favor. 21 in favor, one opposed, and three excused. Thank you. Back to the resolution itself. Any discussion? Legislator Castillo. Mr. Chairman and fellow legislators, I'd like to explain my vote. It's been brought up that I want to wait on things, and I, I'm voting no. But I would gladly vote yes on every one of these resolutions if we waited until the Attorney General's office would come back and say, no, we're not going to look into this. Then I would gladly welcome any investigation that we could do. But until that time, I cannot be in favor of spending money, local money, when we pay taxpayers state tax money, and we can get the Attorney General's office. But if they say no, then I say yes to every one of these. <coughs> but until we hear from them, I can't be in favor of them, and I can't be in favor of moving money around haphazardly, just so what are we going to need for a retainer to keep the, the lawyer up in uh, up north on until he can do his investigation? Again, we're spending money we shouldn't be spending. Thank you. Legislator Rio. Uh, well, Mr. Chairman, I, I just uh, wanted to state for the record that um, when Bonadeo came through in uh, 2016, um, there were extensive changes made based on their reports. Uh, there were improvements made in the department. We did not uh, follow every exact by the letter uh, change that they requested, but we amended those and, and, and did even further changes. Um, it's been a constant uh, improvement in that department since uh, Commissioner Alvord was hired. Um, I was there the day that we interviewed Stacy uh, Alvord for commissioner. She rose far above uh, all of the other applicants um, in her experience uh, and her mission-driven, uh, just the, the, uh, the attention to detail, uh, how much she already knew about Oswego County coming from the Lewis County as commissioner. Um, she's been an outstanding commissioner, and I, and I think that uh, the changes that we're going to make uh, that we're looking to have work with Bonadeo on now are not, the, this is not the investigative piece, this is the improvement piece. This is the process to take us forward uh, and to address any potential issues. Regardless if there are any issues, there are always ways to do better. Um, this, this, these are folks, there's over 300 people at DSS uh, working every day on behalf of not just children, but on adults, on people with disabilities, um, every manner of problem. We have mental, uh, mental health services. We're working with people that are substance uh, uh, abuse addicted. Uh, and, and then the problems that occur from that um, for their families and their children. Uh, those folks should not be vilified um, in the press that had nothing to do with this. Um, and I think uh, we are going to, we're going to be better from this. It, it, I'm, I'm, uh, we are constantly trying to be better but because of this, there's going to be an either, either tight or laser focus on doing the best that we can with what we have. Thank you. Thank you. Legislator Evans. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I mean, it's, I just think it's fascinating uh, that we have to continuously do uh, verbal gymnastics and explaining how our vote, why we're growing the way we are voting. Uh, and this is what, the second or third time I've heard it uh, since January. Let me make this clear. <clears throat> We are moving this forward as quickly as we possibly can. For a man that sits there professing that we weren't moving quick enough, now that we are moving, well, we better slow this thing down. And we better wait weeks, we better wait months until the AG gives us a phone call back. That's not good enough. We are here today to advance this forward in the best possible way we can. Within the rules, within uh, the guidance that we have been given within the legal standing of the case that is in hand. Ladies and gentlemen, we cannot wait. And contrary to my colleague across the aisle, we are unwilling to wait a few more weeks, a few more months to get the job done. Thank you. Thank you. And I would add that 
uh, I will admit, looking forward to the Attorney General's response, we would willingly give them access to anything they need if and when they come. Legislator Castillo. I'm sorry, but I think, aren't we in the United States of America? Can I express my opinion? My, uh, my process of voting, that's the First Amendment right, and I'm sorry, but I'm always going to do it, and if that upsets some people, I'm sorry. All right, thank you. Any other discussion? Roll call vote, please. Michael Yerman. Yes. Herbert Yerman. Yes. Edward Gilson. Yes. David Holtz. Yes. Roy Rehill. Yes. John Martinez and Mark Excuse, Frank Bombardo. Yes. Paul House. Yes. James Weatherup. Yes. Mary Ellen Chesbros and Mark Excuse, Linda Lockwood. Yes. Richard Klein. Permanent. Patrick Twist. Yes. Stephen Walpole. Yes. Nathan Emmons. Yes. James Scanlon. Yes. Laura Nagano. Yes. Robert Wilmot. Yes. Marie Shaw's been marked excuse. Tim Stahl. Yes. Noelle Samuelson. Yes. James Karasik. Yes. Michael Soloway. Yes. Mark Greco. Yes. Frank Castilia. No. Mr. Chairman, that's 21 in favor, one opposed, and three excused. Thank you. I'm looking for the appropriate motion. Our legislator correct. I just want to step off of this role into another role and thank this body as a uh, As a person with disability, thank you. I make a motion. All right. Legislator Crass made the motion with yours. Thank you.